Hello and welcome to Off The Crossbar Euros Watch Day 4 with myself, Regan Walsh and as ever, Brad. How are you after yesterday's action? Uh, it's not okay. Yeah, it's like underwhelming in terms of one team, but we'll get on to that. Because yes. t- today we have our own word of the day. And that, and that is... Word, that word is deaf. <laughs> yes. We have the group of deaf finally starting. I mean, we've got ages ago because there's only the two games and it starts at five o'clock but we will get on to that later because Scotland played in their first major tournament in 23 years didn't go to plan for them but my god did Patrick Schick turn up oh that boy come on ready is it the goalkeeper darted to play a half way up <laughs> yeah his first goal was decent enough good uh, assist from or cross from Vladimir Kufa uh, and good header from Schick to get past uh, David Marshall and goal for uh, Scotland. And then, what, not even 10 minutes into the second half, he scores possibly the greatest goal at a Euros. Definitely the furthest. I was say, it's, it's kind of up there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Because he was just, oh. I mean, uh, with the analysis of what they did, I think they s- s- nailed it spot on. Is why was the right back? I think it was Hendry at the time for Scotland. Uh, why was he so far up? And then that just allowed uh, Sheik to have all that free space of when the ball was bubbled towards him. And obviously, uh, the one angle you can see Sheik have a look at Marshall before he even gets the ball, so he's literally able to. Uh, chip it straight away because he knows Marshall's off his line. But it was more that he decided to take a shot. Where that yeah. Which wasn't the best thing to do in that situation. Mm. But he turned out to be. <laughs> I mean, have you seen the angle uh, f- from behind Chick? Like how far wide of the goal yeah. it starts the ball? Yeah. Like, that no, that that's is ridiculous. What made it, that made it more baffling. Yeah. Why is he so far up? Is he big as Manuel Neuer? No, yeah. But... yeah. It's just crazy. I mean, like I could understand maybe late in the game and they're trying to push for an equaliser or go for the winner. And he's like been told by Steve Clark that he can go up uh, for a corner or something. But ten, not even 10 minutes into the second half and he's doing that. He's fucking crazy. Uh, but overall, I think uh, Czech Republic were in control for the majority of the game. Uh, obviously, Scotland had the more shots, but I don't think uh, the Czech goalkeeper, uh, Thomas Vlachik, was ever tested too much. I don't think there'd no. be times where he would think he was that worried. No, I wouldn't say so. I think Scotland just lacked that extra little bit of quality. They could have had one goal. But yeah. Robertson had the chance, but Lyndon Doix got the odd chance as well. Mm. It's just lacking. Yeah. It's a little strange to see uh, Lyndon Dykes and Ryan Christie start up top. I mean, considering how Shea Adams was in the, like, one or two games before the tournament, I was expecting him to start up top for them. Uh, but obviously, Steve Clark didn't see that way. However, at half time he did change his mind and brought on uh, Adams to try and get them back into that game. But it didn't really work for him that much. I think what just summed up Scotland's best was just, did you see the first half? It was Ryan Christie. I think he'd run for it and then he's proceeded to get tackled by his own defender. Yeah. <laughs> just, that just summed it up. Mm. Scotland in a major tournament. <laughs> yeah. but if, any, if anything, at least we got this great moment. I know it's not that big. <laughs> it's not that big. <laughs> I can't find it. Have you, have you seen the video? It's. It's that Scottish car saying, what's going on there, Tom? What's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. But yeah, um, tough loss for Scotland, but uh, their main uh, worry is this Friday, the 18th of July, when they take on the old enemy. So The 18th, uh, the 18th of July? No, uh, June, sorry. Yeah, sorry, June, I don't know why I said July then. You got you full Boris then? Yes, that's why I was thinking of... I'm afraid we'll have to delay this game for those reasons. Yes, uh, so Czech Republic on top of the group, England second, Croatia third, and Scotland in fourth place. 
And Group E got underway afterwards at 5 o'clock between Poland and Slovakia. Jesus Christ, Poland were poor. I know. Who would go do something as ridiculous as predicting them to finish top of the group? Like, stupid idiots. That wasn't us, was it? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, that first goal, Robert Mack just did such great work on uh, the left-hand side for Slovakia, getting it past uh, Pekarik and then Satka in defence and then taking the shot, uh, which kind of back off the post and then hit Chesney on his arm to uh, give Slovakia the lead. And it actually has gone down as the boy check Chesney own goal and he becomes the first keeper to score an own goal in the European Championship. He said he went full fever in that moment, just post in bang. Yeah. But you got it if you're Robert Mack because he did quality to get the goal. Oh, he was excellent that whole game, I thought, Robert Mack. I oh, thought Slovakia I... were pretty good all game. Yeah. Then, literally 30 seconds into the restart, Carol Lin- Linetti equalised for Poland. Uh, I think that was just a Slovakia hadn't woke up. I think they were just. Still in sleep mode, really. Yeah, the I was about to, I was about to shot even winning because he seemed to go in the goal in slow motion. Yeah, <laughs> just it's one of them where they always say like, the first minute and a half and the last minute of a half always the worst to concede because you're like you're not prepared for it. You're thinking of half time if it's before half time and you're still in half time mode, uh, coming out of half time and that's what uh, did Slovakia in there and then. Just past the hour, Mark Gregor's Kaczywiak got his second yellow card and was sent off for Poland. I mean, that was silly because for the 20 minutes after their goal, or just under 20 minutes, they were dominating that second half Poland. Like, Paolo Sousa got them set up really well, high press, and it meant that midfield of Slovakia couldn't uh, push uh, Poland back as much as they were in the first half. Yeah. But I don't know if he did. Did Lewandowski seem sort of quiet in this? Oh, he was really quiet. Yeah, I, I put that down to just not getting the service. Yeah, I mean, he. Uh, there was one chance later on in the second half which he nearly set up. I think it was. I don't know if it was Rebus or uh, someone else. It might have been Glick uh, later on in the second half when it was a lovely chest down from Lewandowski. But uh, the finish was just tame and straight at uh, Dubravka. But yeah, Lewandowski, compared to what he was doing at Bayern this past season, I mean, obviously the quality in Bayern Munich and Poland players are light and day. But yeah, he, Lewandowski was just really quiet in this game. Yeah. Uh, we're not going off that one, but I think Group A has suddenly been thrown very wide open. Oh yeah, this I think... We said it in our uh, preview show and our predictions. We said Group B is probably one of the widest groups out there, didn't we? If I remember correctly. Yeah. Oh, we said Group C was the most. Yeah. It would appear Group B e is the one that's actually coming more, through. Yeah. We did say E and C would be the bigger ones, but yeah. E definitely looks like it you now. And then uh, 20 minutes from time, Milan Skriniar gave Slovakia all three points with a header from a Marek Hamšík cross. Uh, Slovakia, I think, thoroughly deserved the three points in the end. Absolutely just bossed that game. And uh, as Emma Hayes said on commentary, they just managed to tame Lewandowski that whole game. I was going to say, I bet you enjoyed her commentary. <laughs> it was, I don't, like, because she was trending on Twitter and I thought, oh, are people going to be uh, slagging her off? Because obviously it's a woman, you know, what? people are like with, with women on commentators but everyone was just praising her giving her as she was given such insightful knowledge and not just coming up with the same old boring cliches that they do she was given like tactical breakdowns and yeah it was a joy to watch but I think that helps because she is still a manager yes it's in a different like gender but football is still football at the end of the day yeah so she... uh, uh, let's be honest she did need to do the cliches because she had the walking one Sat next to her doing the other bit of commentary. Yeah. As he kept saying, so this one Slovakian player's wife did strictly come dancing, going to the ballroom. You never you never know what's the same it's at an opera. That's exactly opera. what we want to hear. <laughs> and the final game in Group E between Spain and Sweden. 
I was a little down. I mean, Spain absolutely dominated the game. 85.1% possession throughout the game to Sweden's 149 they had 17 shots to Sweden's four, five on target to Sweden's one, but the game finished nil-nil. Yeah, this just had all the elements of a boring game. Spain underwhelmed. Sweden couldn't be asked to attack. And Danny Murphy was on commentary. Mm. They did have one good chance, Sweden. Uh, I think it was I'll in the second half. Uh, the one where Alexander Ishak did uh, the few skills past the uh, Spanish defence and then set up Marcus Berg, who just fluffed his lines. One of the easiest goals he could have scored in his whole career. Like, that goal just ruined everything. <laughs> yeah, like the whole build up. Like, I think that could have been, like assisted the tournament for all the it, hard it, work it sacked. It was almost, you know, Carno esque. The one he did yeah. for West Brom. It was almost like that. <laughs> Just yeah, it really was. Sliced it so bad. Isak's a ball. Yeah, he was the he only was... player in this game that went. Wow, he's good. Yeah, he's not going to be at Sociedad much longer. It's like what an attacky buff. Yeah, <laughs> Just... he was best player. I mean, uh, who did they bring on for him in the end? Uh... Victor Clayson. Yeah, and Some he didn't do of. much. Yeah. I would have liked to have seen uh, Jordan Larson come on up top, uh, who the surname may ring a bell, obviously, because he's the son of former Manchester United and Celtic legend Henrik Larson. Mm-hmm. Mm. But, and then Alvaro Morata was just typical Alvaro Morata, wasn't it? The watch, how did he just not even get it on target? <laughs> I just... don't know. Again, bright Something. spark in that Spain squad, probably Pedri. Yeah, I think Sarabia did pretty well when he came on. Yeah. Uh, Jordi Alba did okay. Yeah. I don't like think it, wasn't, that... it wasn't a bad performance of Spain. They just didn't score. Yeah, not clean. I mean, I said it to you yesterday. This is why Spain are going to struggle at this Euros. It's because they haven't got a clinical finisher at all. Should have banged on Adama Traore. They haven't got a clinical finisher at all. <laughs> If he's so good, he could probably just run it into the goal. <laughs> uh, yes, and it's time to talk Group F. Today is the start of the Group of Death and the final round of games for Match Day 1. Starting off at 5 o'clock from the Pushkash Arena in Budapest as Hungary welcome Cristiano Ronaldo and Portugal on paper. It should be a Portugal win. That squad is obviously a lot better than Hungary's squad, who are obviously, like we said in the preview, without Dominic Sobolshoi, uh, who misses out through injury. But I think uh, I'm still thinking about that last Euros when they just got through based on not winning their game. And I've got a feeling like this could happen to them again. Maybe. Depends what Hungary turn up. Like if they're really up for this, then hmm. they should be okay yeah but you know if Portugal bring the quality that we know they have then they're gonna spank them yeah I mean they obviously uh met at uh Euro 2016 in the group stages as well it was the game in the tournament <laughs> yeah um but I think it was 3-3 in the end if I remember correctly yeah I think it was Ronaldo just went off yeah that's all I remember of it. Mm, um, yeah, obviously, the only uh, player we obviously know that isn't in the team for Portugal is obviously João Cancelo, who tested positive uh, for COVID-19. Obviously, we wish him a speedy recovery from that. And they had called up uh, Diogo Delo in his place. So I don't know whether you expect to see him or Rafa Guerrero out uh, on the right-hand side. Uh, yeah, and then, he Guerrero would play. He's got quality. Yeah, and then... Obviously, you'll expect Ronaldo, Bernardo, Bruno, Fernandez. They'll all start. Yeah. So it's going to be an interesting one then. But then the big one, 8 o'clock, live from the Allianz Arena in Munich, France versus Germany. Oh, finally. Amazing game. I am so ready for this game now. Yeah, like... 
sort of overshadowed a little bit by what's happened with France. If we've said all the Mbappe Giroud stuff. Yeah, because uh, Giroud has came out and criticised his teammates and all that, and Mbappe isn't best happy with it. Which it always seems to happen just before France play a major tournament. There's always some uh, something rife in the camp. Mm. Well, hey, the last time they won a World Cup didn't. Well, no, it did. It ended very well. They won the Euros, but the last time they won the Euros, they ended up going out of the group stage of the World Cup. So, oh, true. Maybe who do, who knows what could happen. I don't expect that at all. As I still think they're favourites to go all the way. Yeah, it just depends how good Germany are. Mm. And obviously, this being Joachim Lowe's last tournament in charge of the German national team before he heads out this summer to be replaced by Hansi Flick. Will Germany want to give him a nice present uh, and go on and win the Euros? It could happen, but you never know with this Germany side. Uh, but I think this could really be a thriller. I don't know. I don't expect it to be a high-scoring game, but I think it's going to be very entertaining. See, I, I don't know if it will be entertaining. Like, I, I always expect it to be quite close. Mm. Maybe a bit too tense. Neither team is going to commit too much. France aren't a massive attacking side, and I don't think Germany are as much either. I think they've calmed down their like just endless attacking in recent years. Yeah. So no nil. nil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, no, I, I'm going to go with. Uh, France to win 2 1. Weirdly, I wouldn't be surprised if Germany swung the. I don't want to say surprise, it wouldn't be a surprise. Hmm. You're going to stick with your draw then? Yeah, I'll stick with your draw. Okay. Uh, and the other game? Hmm. Yeah, Portugal win. Yeah, so we're both going for Portugal. Um, a bit of team news regarding the England camp has just came out and that is uh, uh, Sheffield United goalkeeper Aaron Ramsdale has replaced Dean Henderson in the England squad as the Manchester United goalkeeper continues to struggle for fitness with a hip injury uh, so obviously that's bad news for uh, Henderson obviously we wish him a speedy recovery from that but I don't think it's going to make much difference because you expect Pickford to be uh, the number one a striker throughout this whole tournament for England anyway. He, he, Aaron Ramsdale is now just there to receive the BT Jack Grealish volleys that yes. are going on in England training. Oh. I mean, I saw a video the other day of uh, James Ward Prowse uh, when he was a part of the 33 man squad just putting shots past Dean Henderson, and Henderson was just getting pissed because he kept scoring every single time. That would be percent of. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's all the team news and uh, stuff regarding this week's uh, well, today's games, not this week's games, today's games and I look back on yesterday uh, for our predictions we got all three games wrong which is a first for us in this tournament Just We're pretty useless You're pretty useless You've still <laughs> only got the one game right I've I've at least got four rights this tournament. Oh god. <laughs> yes. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow to round up actually the group of deaths action and the start of match day two in the Euros. As we have three games again to look forward to on Tuesday, starting off with Finland, Russia, followed by Turkey Wales and Italy, Switzerland to round off the day. I think it'll be Wednesday. Today is Tuesday. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, Wednesday. I don't know why I thought today was Monday for a second then. Oh, you'd be useless about me. I know. First I said uh, England facing Scotland on the 18th of July, and now I'm saying tomorrow's Tuesday. Uh, right, anyway, make sure you are following us on Twitter for updates on Euro stuff and any other news from around the world of football. A potentially bag of tweets. <laughs> yes. Uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you never miss a post. And until then, it's goodbye from me and goodbye from Brad. See ya. See you soon.